Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. It finally looks like winter has set in across the great state of Michigan. But before this Arctic blast hit, Jenny was able to get out and do some open water fishing on Saginaw Bay, where we normally would be doing some ice fishing this time of year. They were out there and stumbled into some walleye. You won't want to miss that story. We're actually going to kick things off on the Grand River just from a few weeks back, where I was able to get out there with a good buddy and do some steelhead fishing. Lots of good stories on this week's show. And I think we have time for a bragging board as well. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan. As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988 featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pond, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi. Mid-Michigan Ponds has been building and maintaining ponds and lakes throughout Michigan for nearly 25 years. We combine biology and heavy equipment to make pondscapes that are sustainable and fishable. More information at midmichiganponds.com. What's the plan here today, Dan? The plan today is to head out here on the Grand and look for some steelhead. Yeah, you've been out much? Yeah, I've been going out at least once a week for okay. probably the last month or so and seeing, uh, finding a few every trip so hopefully we can do the same today. Had a little rain yesterday with any luck maybe some new fish showed up. So. Yeah what triggers these fish to be in here this time of year? Oh they trickle up pretty much all fall right after the salmon run come up to eat salmon eggs and and then uh, you know they just push up to the dam and then they end up settling back downstream into some deeper holes and stuff and that's kind of what we're looking for today. Hopefully some new fish came up and getting some new fish in the holes we've been fishing already. And what? tell me about this boat. This is a new boat since I was last with you. Yeah, this is a Hughes Craft 22 foot Evolution. Uh, kind of a Hughes Craft first edition to uh, into the walleye tournament boat market. Um, it's okay. been working out good. Good river boat? Yep, yep. I can't get as shallow as I could with the old jet boat, but that's okay. Uh, we got a kind of a sliding three-way rig to a sinker and then we got our leader of fluorocarbon here to a hook which is going to go a spawn bag is going to be attached to that and have a couple different colors tied up all the time on the boat so we can choose what we want there you go potter Give it to the guy with the hot hand. The hot hand, oh seems boy. To always get us going in the first hole, so. I'm just using, on this boat, I'm using a, the bow mount motor just to slowly take us downstream, just a little bit slower than the current. Okay. Placing our spawn bag right on the bottom. 
and uh, backing it down through these holes. And how big a weight did you say was on that? This is, depending on what kind of hole we're in, but anywhere between three quarter ounce, five eighths ounce. If you get in some real deep fast water, one ounce is sometimes necessary, but usually three quarter to five eighths gets me down here in the Grand. Dan has been fishing this river for many years and it didn't take long for us to find fish number one. We got action. Got a little something going? Yep. Finally right at the back of the hole, we got a bite. <coughs> yep. It kind of seems like it's a smaller one. We've been seeing a lot of smaller ones this year. At least in the last few weeks. Ooh. Grab the net, Potter. Net man, you can go back on that deck if you want. There's some silver. Hey! hey, hey. A nice fish. Yeah. Bang, well, bang, boom. Little, little hatchery fish there. No adipose. Hold that bad boy up. Yep. Nice. Look at that. It's almost like you know what you're doing. <laughs> we're gonna let him go. Nice job, Danny. Yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Bang, bang, boom. Well, that didn't take too long. Nope. All this boat traffic out here, geez, so peace. I know, the wake, the, the sea dews. <laughs> you know, that's the only Not too downside. Many people out today. This is nope. even a weekend. Well, we'll probably run into a few boats eventually, but not yeah, yet so, so far. But you have been seeing a few people out. Yeah, every weekend especially. You know, there's half a dozen guys at least coming through here, so okay. everybody's picking a few fish up. Growing up fishing this river, Dan knows the holes and where to find fish. I first met Dan when he was a catfish guide on this river about 15 years ago. As we moved from spot to spot, I asked him how we got started and if he guides any longer. By trade, I'm a tile setter. That's that's the trade that I was doing back then in uh, like 07-ish. The construction market really took a dive around this area. So we didn't have children yet and my wife said, why don't you just do something different? And I always wanted to do, be a guide and uh, I grew up fishing this river and I knew about the whole channel cat run that took place in the spring and I always wanted to show people it and so that's how I got started guiding was I was taking people channel cat fishing back then in the in the mid 2000s and in doing that I learned a lot of river I learned all sorts of different holes and stuff and places where where people don't typically steal at fish but come to find out there's there's fish there so I, I still fish a lot of those same holes and I don't guide anymore. Um, the market picked back up for construction in the area, so that's been going really well for a while, and now I just fish for fun, okay. and I enjoy it. Oh, we're on that one. Nice. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, we'll have to get some a one. Nice job. Yeah, nice male there. Fish. Oh, yeah, that's nice. All right, let's get some pictures of that guy. We were not setting the world on fire today, but we were steadily plugging away and finding a few fish in most of the spots we would try. We did release every steelhead we caught today, which is pretty hard to do because they are some great eating fish. We did put a few plug rods down as well, and Dan ran us through our setup today. Main line, I'm running a 10-pound high-vis mono. I like to do that because then I can see 
not only my own line, but I can watch whoever's fishing next to me to make adjustments to my electric motor to keep them in the zone. Um, and then our leader is either eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon. I like Seeger brand, seems to work good for me. But yeah, okay. that's what it is, 10 pound main, 10 pound or eight pound leader. And the rods are just medium action kind of a thing? These or? are a medium light, uh, nine foot. Um, you want something with a fast tip for this. As you're tapping along, you don't want a whole bunch of lag in the tip. You just want it to bounce right back. And uh, you want something sensitive. Uh, graphite rods, high modulus graphite is good for this. Fiberglass rods are plenty tough, but you just don't have the feel with them for the, for the bottom. Hmm. And your plug rods? Plug rods are nothing fancy. I mean, these are just, just a, a seven and a half foot planer board rod, kind of a medium light these ones here are but that I don't worry about too much okay you can get away with really anything for a plug rod and how long will this fishing be good for this will be fairly steady right up until the main spawning run in late March and April but uh, this fit the fishing in the lower stretches of the, the Grand here the closer you get to that time especially if we were to get a high water event those fish would all push right up so as long as it stays cold, fairly low water throughout the winter, there's always fish down here. Another nice fish. Got a little bit of color on them. Dandy. Do you want to keep that one, Jimmy? No, that's all right. Let Be a good go. one to keep. We were having a good day for sure, and even though you don't think of this kind of weather for this time of year, well, you take what you get. And we did have another taker as well, and this was, well, a bit of a surprise. Another plug bite? Yeah, it's acting very strange, too. Is that a walleye? That is a walleye. Really? Yep. Not unheard of, but... We'll take it. Look at that. We'll take it. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have to keep one, I guess. <laughs> and I have to fire up the live well. Well, as we were about ready to pull lines for the day, we had one more fish on. I think he was on there for a while. No, I just happened to grab the, the rod because there was a log drifting down. And I was trying to move the oh. line out of the way, and as I had the rod in my hand, it hit. Last fish of the night. Last one. There you go, Potter. Those plugs have been pretty good here yeah, in these last few spots. They have been. They've been grabbing us a couple extras. Here you go. Oh, that's a dandy. Yeah. yeah that might be the, one of the better ones today. Longer. Got a little lamprey mark on them. There. Well, that's a good way to finish up, right? <laughs> Sun's going down. Well, I guess the sun never was out, but good way to end it. Hey, look at that. He's got a bead in his mouth. See, so lo somebody lost their bead rig on him today, or maybe yesterday. Who knows? He probably ran into somebody else's bait upriver and broke them off and dropped back here. Well, what's that? We got uh, five steelhead and I think, one I think, walleye? I think we were five for six on steelhead and one bonus walleye. That's a pretty good day. Not bad. I would have liked to have seen a couple bigger ones, but... <laughs> <laughs> See ya! <laughs> Boy, that's graceful there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you call a Grand, grand River grand Release. Grand Release. <laughs> grand Release. <laughs> yep. Fishing with old friends is hard to beat. Steelhead on any river is hard to beat. We as Michiganders, well, we are pretty fortunate to have so many great places to enjoy. 
So get out there on soft water or hard and have a grand old time here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, in this next story, we're going to be doing something that we normally would be doing this time of the year, and that is heading out miles and miles on Saginaw Bay to do some walleye fishing. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this next story, although it's open water and there's not an auger in sight. Last week, I met up with good friends Tina Lamer and Captain Mark Pananzak for an evening of fishing Saginaw Bay. Before heading out, we met in Linwood for an early dinner with some walleye fillets from Mark's trip the day before. Linwood Corners Cafe is one of many restaurants across the state who participates in the Catch and Cook program. Launched in 2012, Michigan Catch and Cook allows charter boat captains and their clients to take their fresh catch to a participating restaurant to cook it up and serve it to them. The chef at Linwood Corners offers three choices of preparation. We went for the comfort food choice of deep fried today before braving the sub-freezing temps on the bay. With some skim ice at the marina here in Linwood, Tina decided to avoid that and trailer her boat to the mouth of the Saginaw River and launch there. So after a fresh walleye dinner, we hit the road and headed to the ramp and met up with Tyler Skideman, who would be fishing with us today too. Mark gave us the rundown for the evening. Obviously it's in January here. We're gonna do a little bit of night trolling out here on the bay, which is my favorite, my personal favorite. I absolutely love night fishing. There's not hardly any boats out and uh, usually get bigger fish so we're gonna head out here we've got my buddy Tyler and Tina with the boat we're gonna be staying nice and warm inside with the heated uh, heated cabin and catch some fish today all right you've been doing all right out here we've been doing I've been doing really well I've been very fortunate we've been catching some nice fish fish around you know eight nine pounds down to you know 21 inches but we've been catching some really nice fish and I'm looking forward to uh, catching a couple nice ones here tonight it's a balmy uh, 27 <laughs> with about a 10 mile an hour wind out of the west and a few snowflakes. So, perfect night for walleye. Captain Tina. Hey, how's it going? How'd you get wrangled into taking Mark out? Well, you know, when he calls and uh, it could possibly be the last trip of the year, you can't turn him down. So, here we are. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mark had an open seat probably, oh shoot, about five years now. He put on social media that he had an open seat. So I jumped on it and that's how we, uh, we connected. So I, uh, I took him up on it. It was like a June, July fish or something for walleyes. And I kind of wanted to, to learn a little bit more about trolling. So I, I went no, with him and we had a great time. And from then on, we've hit it off. All right, so it's your boat. Is it his program today? What is he telling you where we're going? <laughs> I always say, I just drive the boat. That's all I do. I drive the boat. <laughs> no, well, I'm sure it'll be a collaborative of, you know, less. he was out here yesterday, so he probably has a pretty good idea of what he wants to run, and that's fine by me. Uh, we're out here on the sa beautiful Saginaw Bay here, and we're going to start out in about 16 feet of water and head out towards the cigar. Um, for right now before the, the night bite um, and we're gonna run rods lines back probably 35 to 70 feet back in a variety of different colors trying to figure out what the fish want um, for our first pass and then we'll take it from there and once it gets dark we'll probably head into a little shallower water about 16 feet and throw some bandits out and get them there now have you ever been ice fishing on the bay this at this date yes so <laughs> It was probably, I think, 17, 16 or 17, we're out here and uh, we're ice fishing. Actually, my son lost his phone through the ice, so I just had a picture come up in memories with his phone down there all lit up. So there's been plenty of years we've been out here on the ice, but this year, obviously, we don't have ice yet. Hopefully, it's supposed to get cold here in the next uh, week or so, so hopefully that changes. But for right now, we're out here in the boat doing what we can do. Just grabbing the net, fish on. What are these fish doing this time of year? Swimming around looking for food. <laughs> That's what walleye do 24 7. Just they're obviously aggressive feeders and looking for bait fish. That's the biggest key out here on the Saginaw Bay is finding bait fish. And if you find a bait fish, the walleye will be there. So that's our biggest issue out here is always trying to find that bait fish, that pot of bait fish, and then the active walleye with them. 
and they've been hanging out here in this area here for the last couple days so we should be able to hopefully uh hopefully catch a few that's a good one that's what we're out here for oh my word and that's what this that's what the saginaw bay is giving up right now you know in the fall the fall the uh the, the saginaw bay is the best fishery we have in the fall november december we have the best fishing we have the biggest fish <laughs> and it's hooked. just phenomenal the size of fish we're catching actually we got a fish on our top board top board yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, so we got another one on so we had a double on so now we're going after the other one here as we try to get rid of the mess we just created but look at that nice fish that's a solid fish right there for us holy moly gosh that's a piece i love it yeah just an entanglement all right you want to get Mark, I can get I don't even see okay. these fish on the grass. No, so we're in such shallow water. I mean, I mean, we're in 19 feet, but we're in shallow water, so we're not going to mark these fish off to the side that we're catching here. I mean, we have rods out over 100 feet on each side, so we're not going to mark those fish. So a lot of these fish, they're all suspended in the water column up higher. Like this one was 35 feet back on, a, I think it's a bandit grapefruit, which is one of my favorite lures. It's just a stock color. and it just catches fish it seems like for me anyway i know everyone has their favorites but this has always been a solid fish solid uh color for me um but this is another solid nice fish right here right here yeah. another good one this one might be bigger no way oh, oh, oh. there we go oh, oh God. all right so like i said this is this is just a great fish for our Saginaw Bay right here. And that's a great fruit lure, one of my favorites. And I mean, that's a very solid, solid fish. I mean, those, those are beautiful fish. And that's why we come out here this time of year. So we're gonna pick up and uh, we made a long pass out here and caught a couple really nice fish. So now we're gonna pack up and run in shallow water, 15, 16 feet, and go after some big fish. And we'll throw some glow sticks up on the uh, planer boards and go night fishing it's prime time this is our prime time right now just before it gets dark we've been marking a lot of fish but we haven't had a lot a lot of activity since it's went dark um you know we're we're trying all depths and we've got fish on the screen but they're just not uh no takers right now so it's uh kind of a bummer we were hoping for a, a little bit busier of a night but uh it is what it is and that's fishing we ended our trip with just those two nice fish right before dark. Even so, it was time well spent with great friends. A delicious meal, lots of laughs, a couple of beefy walleyes, and precious time on the water with fellow anglers is what we all live for here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or you want to see something again, you can always check us out online. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. Hopefully, we're going to get out and do some ice fishing around the state of Michigan. And we are sitting down with the DNR here later this week to kind of go over the deer season, what happened, what didn't happen, and some stuff that we can be learning about our deer herd. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. And as always, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO, the number two, Alta. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices, which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. By Jay's Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. When I wander far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe. St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love